Here on classicbanjo.ning.com, I'm quite often asked if there are any pieces that we could play uh, which I could do lessons of for people who are actually just beginning with classic style. Probably one of the most famous pieces and one of the most popular for beginners to the classic style is the Sunflower Dance as played by Bess Osman and plenty of other people of the era, including Fred Van Epps in his own inimitable way. I was taught to play Sunflower Dance by Chris Sands, who was taught by Tarrant Bailey Jr., who was probably the finest classic style player of the 90s, 20s and 30s and 40s probably in the UK. I've produced a notation and tablature for the piece, showing every single note, where it is, how you play it, and what we'll try to do is work through the piece and see if you can, you can follow the score and play along. There are other tablature scores available uh, on the internet and these vary slightly from my fingering. Now the reason this happens is that many people who come to classic style have come from another style of banjo playing, maybe, maybe from the bluegrass style, and chords are played in different positions and scales are played on different ways on the fingerboard. Now on the true classic style, I was always taught that you try to alternate fingers as much as possible without repeating. So you will go thumb, index, second, thumb, index, second, or in a sort of rotation where you're not going thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, index. This, this method of playing helps increase the speed when you become more proficient at classic style. Alternate fingering I, is mentioned a lot on the lesson videos and the significance may become no, noticed in this piece. The other thing I was taught was if you are moving up and down the fingerboard, try to move on a long note rather than a short one. Because if you try to move on a very short note, it's very jumpy. If you've got a slightly longer note, it's ringing on while you're moving. Also, if you're moving up the fingerboard, try to, if possible, if you're in the right key, use the fifth string or octave string to allow rapid movement. So you can be... Moving on from that, also the beat is important. To get a foot tapping rhythm, you want the first beat of the bar to be stronger and more noticeable than the other beats in the bar. All right, on syncopated rhythms, it might be slightly different, but we're not worried about those at the moment. And the strongest of the picking fingers is actually the thumb. So if you can hit the note with your, your thumb for the first beat in the bar, the next strongest is the second finger. So the music is laid out on the tablature. You will notice that the majority of instances, the first note of the bar, where possible, is going to be a second finger. So you get a nice strong attack, or a thumb. So you get a nice strong attack. So follow the fingering my way. You may not like it. You may prefer other tablature scores that are available, but give my way a try. The other thing it does, it allows you to move, get practice of moving up and down the fingerboard. On bluegrass scales, they're often played in one position, so you're playing and hardly moving your hand. On the scales on classic scale, you move up and down. So this gets you familiar with jumping to different positions on the fingerboard. Anyway, enough of the talk, we'll get on with Sunflower Dance. The score for the piece is made available as a PDF download, showing both the notation and the tablature, and you can download this by clicking the resources link which accompanies the video. In the Sunflower Dance, you will notice there are a lot of instances where there is a note with a dot following it, and then the second note, which is tied together, has an extra tail. The rhythm for this is da di. And you'll see all the way through the Sunflower Dance, you're getting this da di da di da di rhythm. <laughs> Starting with the first bar, which is known as a lead-in bar, it's an open second, and then the first finger down, touch with the thumb. Now the open first with the second finger, now the second finger comes down onto the second fret, now the open first again, now the octave with the thumb, third finger comes to the ninth, first finger falls on the seventh fret on the first string, now the octave again. Now pick the first string with the first finger, 
fourth finger comes down to the fourth fret on the first string, picked with the second. And now we've got a 3 1 2 chord. Third finger, first, second. Now the second finger is already in the right place on the third string. Open second. Now this is the bar four. Now together we've got three notes here in what is known as a triplet. So it's thumb, index, first, all on the second string. Open. Now the second finger for the first string. Jump up to the ninth again. Now we're going to jump up to the fifth position. The first finger is on the fifth fret and it's a 4-1-2 chord. Now hit the octave. Second position, we're putting a barre with the first finger and the fourth finger goes on the fourth fret on the first. Pick the fourth. Lift off the fourth. Now lift off and you open first. Put the third finger at the second fret. Now the first finger. Now the second finger comes across on the third string. Now, those are all open strings. Now it repeats. It's actually quite difficult trying to explain every note as you go through, but you have the tablature. We've done it with the first section. Just try following the notes on the second section and I'll point out if there are any unusual things which I'm doing. Starting on bar 17, put a single finger barre across three strings at the second fret. Most of the notes are now simply played across that barre. We start on the third string with two thumbs. Now the first finger picks the second string and the second picks the first string. Now back to the octave, now back down again from the first string, second string, third string. Now your second finger comes on at the third fret on the second string. Now it repeats. Barre. Now we're jumping up, as you can see it says to 7th PB. We jump up to the 7th fret with a barre, with the first finger, but the 4th finger goes at the 9th fret. And I pick the outer two strings, the 3rd and the 1st strings. Lift off the 4th finger and just pinch the 3 notes. Now on from bar 21, it repeats again. second finger is on the second string, ready, pick, lift off the second finger. Now we're going to go to an extended 4-1-2 chord. You'll recognise the extended 4-1-2 chords if you've downloaded the chord sheets on the lessons videos. Now the first section repeats again. trio section at bar 33. In the trio you'll notice that the C sharp and the F sharp are no longer sharp. All the notes are natural. We've changed back to the key of C. We start here by putting the fourth finger at the third fret on the first string and the first finger is ready 
to come down at the first fret on the third. But at the moment we just pick, do the open string, open third. Now the thumb again. Now the second finger comes down. Now the open second with the thumb. That's the end of the bar. Now we're going to put the first finger on the first fret on the second string. And you'll notice there's a line which draws to the next note. This is a slide. So we're going to hit the note and then play it again. So we hit it with the thumb and then pick it with the first finger. The fourth finger is down at the seventh fret. Now the octave, jump back down to the first position for a 2 1 0 chord. Finger off. Now in bar 35, open second string with the thumb, open first string with the first finger. Now jump up with the third finger to the seventh fret. Now at the octave, now the seventh fret again. Now the octave, jump down with the third finger to the third fret and snap that off. Now we're going to the first finger on the first fret on the second string again, sliding up. Now it repeats again from as it did from bar 33. Bar 39 it's the second string open again, and then the first string open. Jump up to the seventh fret with the first finger. Now the octave. Now the third finger is at the ninth. Now off with the third. Now the octave. Now the third finger goes at the third fret. Now the second. Now the open string. Now we're ready to hit the second string first fret with a thumb. 2 one, 0 chord. Now the bass string and the second string together. Now the fourth finger goes on the third string. And the second finger falls down at the second fret. Now it starts again. Now that's how to play the sunflower dance. Just follow the notation and if you're struggling follow the tablet show and that will show you exactly where to put your fingers. If you want to see the Sunflower Dance played, just do a search for Sunflower Dance on our website and you will find many videos of people performing the piece. If you want to play along with the second banjo part, Mike Moss, one of our members, has very kindly produced audio files at two speeds of the Sunflower Dance second banjo part. So you can play along with the Maestro Mike. Just download them uh, as available download links with the resources and the notation score.